Hello. Uh, now, friends, I'd like to begin with one of the most iconic tales in American history. In 1752, a fearless researcher let loose his kite into the storming heavens. Rain fell and clouds thundered and suddenly a great big bolt of electric fire came down the wire attached to the kite, accumulating in a metal key, letting loose a mighty spark into the valiant scientist's outstretched fist. And that is how Benjamin Franklin proved that electricity and lightning are one and the same. This, this scientific tale is of such paramount and historical importance that it is our only known experiment to be immortalized on any country's coin. Look at that piece of uh, man beef. Isn't he grand? Uh, well, tonight I'm here to pop your bubble. I'm going to present some very plausible evidence that not only did the kite experiment never happen, but that the whole idea of the kite experiment is the end result of the most consequential prank in American history. But first, I want to talk about Benjamin Franklin the man. He was many things, a businessman, a statesman, a ladies man. Uh, but <laughs> Also, he was one of the most infamous pranksters of his era. Uh, this was a dude that was pranking on his deathbed. And I'm not even kidding. 25 days before he died, he anonymously publishes uh, this letter, supposedly written in the 1600s by a Muslim slaver that extols the virtue of enslaving Christians. Uh, according to the slaver, putting Christian women into bondage is a good thing because they kind of like it. Uh, and uh, the God-fearing Christian public of the colonies was horrified until they realized that the letters taken almost word for word by a recent speech carried out by a pro-slavery Southern politician. And then they were like, eh, and fuck them. Uh, uh, this was one of many, many pranks that Franklin uh, pulled off. For example, 1747, he anonymously publishes an article about a woman put on trial by the Presbyterian Church for having too many illegitimate children. And the woman's like, I can't help it. I just love the process of child begetting oh so very much. And one of the judges marries her the next day. Uh, this uh, scandalous letter goes viral, not just in the colonies, but in Paris and London. And it takes Franklin 40 years to admit, admit that he made the whole thing up, which means we can add the invention of fake news to Franklin's many accomplishments. Uh, what, what I'm trying to get at here is that uh, the man uh, wasn't exactly married to the truth. Uh, but that shouldn't take away from his very real accomplishments in the field of electric science, which was, and this was carried out in an era when electricity was less of a science and more of like, uh, uh, more of a party. Uh, so this is an actual uh, British experiment from the early 1740s. We got some sm poor schmuck hanging from the ceiling. An electric current is applied to his bare foot. It goes through his body, electrifying the beautiful woman holding his hand. Uh, Franklin takes a look at this bullshit and goes, I can do better. Uh, in 1746, he carries out a series of high school level experiments that lead to an ingenious conclusion. Franklin uh, concludes that an excess of electricity causes what he calls a positive charge, which result in an equivalent, it results in an equivalent deficit of electricity causing what he calls a negative charge. According to Franklin's theories, positive and negative are drawn to each other to form one swir swirling harmonious whole. And this is huge! Uh, the reason we have little pluses and minuses on our batteries today is because of uh, Franklin's theory. And Franklin knows he's on to something, so he decides to share his discoveries with the wisest scientific body of the land, the Royal Society of London. In 1737, he sends a letter. It's intercepted by this man, William Watson, the Royal Society's foremost expert in all things electric. Uh, January 1748, at a Royal Society meeting, Watson gets up, reads an excerpt from the letter pertaining to this theory of charges, and goes, this theory is absolutely correct. And I would know, because I myself discovered it last spring, which was a lie. This man is a liar. He straight up steals 
Franklin's research, because he figures Franklin is some country bumpkin from the colonies, and there's shit he can do about it. It takes Franklin uh, uh, about a year to learn that his research has been scooped, and he's, uh, he's pissed. So he writes a response. He's like, Watson, I got another experiment for you. You take a portrait of King George, stick an electrified crown on his head, and see if you can snatch off the crown before getting burned. Uh, this in the day when snatching the crown off a king, king's head is a hangable offense. It's his way of going, hey, why don't you try taking credit for this one, you king-loving son of a bitch! Uh, Watson is not amused. He pens a very nasty, rude uh, response that doesn't even address L uh, Franklin by name. He basically goes, dude, your theories are shit. And the ones that aren't shit, I came up with first, and your tomfoolery isn't funny. Franklin receives this letter July 27th, 1750. Two days later, he begins to write by candlelight, and he writes, okay, I got one more experiment for you. Uh, and this one will prove that electricity and lightning are the same thing. You take a long metal pole, wait for it to start to rain, uh, get up to the highest tower you can find, hold the pole with both hands, and wait for lightning to strike. It'll be perfectly safe, I promise. Uh, now, Franklin obviously knew this wasn't safe. The man had spent the latter part of the previous year trying to electrify turkeys to death because animal rights was not a thing that happened back then. Okay, okay, fun fact. At one point, the future founding father is wrestling with a turkey, trying to shove it into an electric battery. The bird's fighting back. Franklin slips, touches the battery, and goes Pssst. He passes out for like three minutes. Uh, he knew how dangerous electricity could be, uh, which means that in the yeah, best case scenario, he's just trying to troll Watson. Worst case scenario, he's actively trying to prank Watson into electrifying himself to death. Although, to be fair, the bastard has it coming. Uh, I mean, Watson's no idiot. He ignores the letter, and then something unexpected happens. A copy, a single copy of the letter, makes it across the English Channel into the hands of this Frenchman, uh, Georges Leclerc, better known as the Count of Buffon. Uh, uh, the Count is a very talented biologist and botanist, but he knows shit about electricity. So when he reads the letter, he doesn't interpret it as a prank that's about to get way out of hand. He goes, Sacre bleu! I must try this. Uh, he pays for the construction of this device. It's a long metal pole holed up by some wood. Thank God nobody was holding the pole. It would have ended badly, but people died anyway. We'll get to that. Uh, uh, May 1752, thunder is heard in the area. An assistant runs up to the pole, reaches out with his hand, and gets a shock that leaves a burn mark around his wrist shaped like a jellyfish sting. I want to reiterate how extremely dangerous and stupid this was. In fact, one year later, a German scientist named Georg Richmann attempts to replicate the experiment, and this happens. Uh, this is Richmann and his assistant getting hit by lightning, getting thrown across the room. The assistant survives. Richmann is hit in the face, the lightning, lightning travels down his body, out his left foot, his shoe is torn off, his blood evaporates instantaneously. Do not fuck with lightning, boys and girls. It'll end badly. Uh, meanwhile, Paris, 1752. Everybody's talking about the success of the so-called Philadelphia experiment. Uh, King Louis XV hears about it, he's really impressed. Uh, Franklin is a hero in Paris. Ward gets back to the colonies four months later. Franklin bu Franklin's buddies are knocking at his door going, hey, uh, so Ben, when are you gonna replicate your famous, very dangerous Philadelphia experiment here in Philly? And one can almost imagine Franklin going, oh, she." <laughs> All right, this is where uh, uh, things get shady. Uh, October 1752, Franklin publishes this letter in the Philadelphia Gazette, this very short letter. I'm gonna summarize it quickly, though there's not much to summarize. He basically goes, okay, so a version of the Philadelphia experiment has totally been done here in Philly. Uh, it's much cooler than the French version, and you can do it too. All you gotta do is take a kite, tie a, a wire to it, attach it to a key, the other end of the key is attached to a silk thread, fly the kite out a window in a thunderstorm, and you'll get a pleasant shock on the fist. There's a bunch of things that are wrong with this letter. Most important one is that Franklin never actually says that he did the experiment. He writes, if I were to do it, i do it like this. Uh, and that man is a shameless self-promoter. It's not like him to not take credit when credit is due. There's other things wrong with the letter, but I want to focus on what's wrong with the science. First and foremost, 
uh, if Franklin had done the experiment, it probably would have killed him. Uh, let me make one thing clear. Uh, all scientists and historians are in agreement that if lightning had actually ki hit the kite, then the 50,000 degree Fahrenheit bolt of Jupiter's fury would have fried Ben Franklin like a turkey. Uh, Franklin only survives if he gets super lucky and some random static uh, hits uh, from the cloud hits the kite and he ends the experiment before getting killed. And sure, let's assume that that's what happened, uh, as unlikely as it can be. Even then, the experiment simply doesn't work. And the key to understanding why is this key. I'm not even going to talk about the silk ribbon attached to the key and how if any moisture would have totally fucked up the experiment and the dude is flying a kite in the thunderstorm. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, this is what an average 18th century house gear looks like. It's a heavy ass piece of brass metal. You tie that shit to a kite string and it's gonna go uh, straight into the ground. And they knew that in Franklin's times. Here is an early 19th century uh, painting of the experiment. And the artist, who knew what a fucking house key looks like, is trying to figure out how to get the key not to hit the ground. So he has Franklin holding it by, uh, like this uh, at both ends of the rope, the silk and the wire. And if that had happened, the, the, the electricity would have gone down his left arm through his foot, never touching the key. But even that seemed more plausible to the artist than the fucking laws of gravity not working. <laughs> and the kite, uh, like, they keep fluttering about like a butterfly. But that's an artist's uh, take on things. What do modern historians have to say about the matter? I sampled them. 30% of them don't think the experiment happened. Others, like famed biographer uh, Walter Isaacson, is totally dead set that it did occur. To quote Isaacson, it is unreasonable, I think, to believe that Franklin fabricated the facts of his kite experiment. There is no case of his ever embellishing his scientific achievements. And, dude, you know, of Isaacson, I get it. The, the man is one of your childhood heroes. I know where you're coming from. But as I learned over recent years, sometimes our childhood heroes have a dark side. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, what do I have, do, like, what do I think? Do I think the... The experiment actually happened. Well, I've carefully weighed all the evidence, and I don't fucking know. And unless we build a time machine, I don't think we'll ever know. History as we know it is built not on just facts, but also myths, legends, and pranks gone terribly wrong. I can't say one thing with definite circumstances, whether or not the experiment occurred. Uh, the idea of the experiment had huge consequences way beyond the world of science. 1776. We rebel from the British, and they are slaughtering us. We're like heavily outgunned. Well, we'll get to the ships. Uh, we desperately need resources, and the only country that can give it to us is uh, France. So Ben Franklin is set to sent to Paris uh, you know, to be an ambassador, and the French greet him like a hero. Why? They don't care about his politics or his uh, witty quotes or whatnot. They know him for one thing and one thing only. He is a modern Prometheus that has snatched up lightning from the gods and brought it down for all mankind to understand. And the French government goes, Franklin, you're awesome. Your country's awesome. Here's money. Here's warships. Now go and kick some British ass. And so we did. We took the resources that Franklin begat us and we sent those British bastards back to Britain. And that, friends, that, friends, is how what was quite plausibly a lie led to the founding of a very imperfect democracy. Cheers.